30 seconds, okay? And hello again, everyone. Welcome to Brooksy's Barn live right here in Jackson, Tennessee for the USJ Sports Show. I'm Steve Beverly with you tonight. And, of course, we've got Coach Mike Stroop after last week's outstanding victory over Hardin County. And so let me introduce him as well as Coach. I'm going to have you introduce your guest who you have with us tonight. Dylan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you do that again because <laughs> right. I forgot. To, this is live television, folks, and I forgot to unmute their mics. So <laughs> introduce him again. Right, this is our uh, assistant coach, uh, receivers coach, Dylan Simmons. Dylan, nice to have you with us yes, tonight. Sir, yes, and, sir. and a terrific win this past week, 24-17 to 17 over Hardin County, a team that was ranked in some polls as high as number two yeah. in their particular classification. Give us your takeaway from this one and about how your team performed, particularly under pressure. Well, I mean, it was it was a physical game. We knew it was going to be a physical game. Uh, we prepared for it, uh, that, that type of game, all week last week. And, uh, you know, the kids took to the game plan and took to the practice plan. And, uh, you know, they came out and, and, and played hard on Friday. And, uh, you know, we, we – we played well enough to win. Yeah, three and one record on the season, and you had a guy that was as a receiver, and also for eight tackles that was chosen as the one hundred one point five player of the week. Tell yes, us about sir. him, yes, sir. Oh, Jace Barksdale, great kid, great athlete on the field and off the field. Uh, some things you just can't teach, and he has some of those <laughs> things with making guys miss in space or just finding a way to get open. It's when when somebody's down there, just throw it up, and he'll be down there somewhere. Well, that's what they say. It's the, it's the you better be there passes, and he'll be and there. He'll be right there the every time. Yep. For that. And, and looking back at this, what did you feel was the real turning point of the game that allowed you to win? Well, defense. Uh, defense, uh, uh, they, they, they got stops when we needed stops. Uh, you know, we, we, we were able to get tackles for losses and some sacks, a big key interception. Uh, there before halftime, and you know we had a couple uh, a big uh, you know third down conversions for us uh, there uh, you know before halftime and late in the fourth quarter there to help us seal the deal. Well, why don't we go right to the highlights right now and show everybody how it happened this past week? And and coaches, I'm going to allow you to basically call the play by play on this one as you see it. So if you'll roll it, let's go. All right, Mike, where are we at right here? Uh, this is a uh, little, little, little RPO here we have to Jace, and Jace learned a valuable lesson not to run with your head backwards here. <laughs> but uh, he's got some ex exceptional speed, as you can see right there. Oh, yeah, about Very a 68-yard gain on yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same play, replay. Watch it slower. Uh, <laughs> he'll, sl he'll fall down in slow motion right here. Uh but, you know, he, he probably should have scored right there, but he comes back. I don't uh, teach that. That's <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't teach that. D Dylan, you, you, we'll, we'll get, excuse you for that. Uh, this is the very next play, second quarter right here, and uh, we had a broken down play, and again, Jace makes a remarkable catch in the, in the back of the end zone and got both feet in and made a one-handed grab right there. And, uh, you know, that was a, uh, an electric play made right there. All right, and again, watch it again in slow motion as you're deep in their territory. Yeah. Berkeley makes a, a – just a, a heck of a throw, and, again, he makes a heck of a catch for us. All right. uh, big interception right here for halftime. Brooks, uh, Brooks Jones uh, picks off a, a pass right here and then takes it back for six. And, uh, you know, that – I mean, that's two scores in a row right there. So, we we turned a 7 nothing into a 14-7 game right there in a matter of seconds. And the emotional lift you have going yeah. into the locker room with yeah. that is just unbelievable. Yeah, the momentum the momentum shift uh, is big in, in, in any sports. And that was, a, that was a big play by Brooks and our defense right there for sure. Got the convoy going in. And Mr. It, Seals, he's here tonight. He'll talk. They knew it just the minute he yeah. had that ball. It was going for six. Yeah. Uh, here's Kevin Finch. Uh, he, he, he takes it around the edge right there. Got some great blocking. Uh, got a hat on a hat uh, on the edge right there. We, we had the numbers, and uh, we, we, we took the run right there. So, 
Uh, great job, uh, you know, Davis Sane over there at tight end. He's here tonight. And, uh, you know, Raleigh Seals gets a, gets a key block right there, and it, and it frees up Kevin. And, you know, we, we are off to the races here. It, just the big explosive plays in this game really yeah. made the huge difference in it. Right. Big third down conversion right here now. This is, this is third and, and goal, basically. And, and we get it down there on the inch line. I thought he might have got in, but, you know, referee said he stepped out. So, uh, you know, we get it down there. I mean, it's basically on the one-inch line. But great job by, uh, by, by, by Berkeley here getting it out to, to Kevin. Uh, and then, you know, Kevin doing the rest. Got some great blocking out here. Uh, you know, wish we could have held that one block a little bit longer. But we worked on that a little bit this week, too. And here you are at the one. Yep, right on the one-yard line. We just called timeout for this play and said, boys, we're just going to push it in here and see what we got. And, you know, that's right before halftime. Now you, now you got 21 an, unanswered points, uh, you know, right there, uh, right before halftime. We, we got it in there. So, we guess you got a big surge, got foot to foot. And we just – I don't even know if we called this play anything. We just said we're going to run up the middle here. So, Kevin gets it in there. Got a big surge by the offensive line. All right, now we're seeing it almost from the sideline yeah. camera. Defensive, uh, defensive uh, tackle for a loss right there. Uh, they ran a quarterback draw, and uh, our D-line was able to sniff that out a little bit right there and, and um, you know, make a play for us right there. So here we go as you're trying to hold off a big rally on the yeah. part of Hardin County. Right. Uh, back offensively, we, we you know a little option route right here, and, and Berkeley and Jays were able to keep it alive and and turn in a, a big play right there, able to get a first down for us right there. Um, so that's a great that's a great job by those two keeping that play alive. Uh, very easily could have gave up on it, but you know, they they string it out, string it out, and uh, you know. Chase moves upfield, Berkeley sees him, they leave him open, and we just toss it out to him. Yeah, they're giving you space out there, and that's where you pick up those 8, 10, 12 yard. And, and yep. when you get a, a player like him that can actually do it after the catch, that's right. what's so huge. Yeah. A uh, little option run again here, and, you know, we got the right read, and, and Kevin got it out on the corner. Got some great blocking by Davis Sane and Raleigh Seals out there. And, again, we're off to the races. Got one guy out there. Down to the three. Yeah. And we'll see this one again. Yep, yep. Raleigh Seals gets a block, key block right there. Davis Sane gets another block right there. And then, you know, Kevin was able to do the rest. And as it goes, 24-17 to 17 was the final as USJ defeats Hardin County. Let me talk to you a little bit about what you teach in receiving. And particularly, we saw some of the plays where – it's a it's a catch and run, and they begin to just pile up the yardage almost as if it's a rush at that point in time. What's the toughest thing about teaching players to do that and also to not look behind whenever they're <laughs> <laughs> you're feeling those footsteps coming just, in? Just teach them to be explosive right when you catch the ball. Just mm -hmm. tuck it and get out of there. Keep ball security even on a big run like that. You know, keep it tucked away. Don't fumble. Don't, don't give the ball back. Um, Trying to teach it in practice, right? Even when you catch it on air, turn around and run for five yards, 15 yards, just practice it in, the, in practice so you do it in the game. Tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I went to Haywood High School in Brownsville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. graduated there, went to UT Martin, um, helped with UT Martin football for a little while as an assist, a student assistant, um, pretty much a GA for a big school. Mm -hmm. Um, did that for about a year and got done, and now I'm a loan officer at In South Bank um, during the day, and I, okay. and I coach in the afternoons. All right, so you <laughs> you got a double duty. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of long hours, but yeah. it's worth it. Well, you know, you got to believe in young people to be able to do what you do yes, and, and, and have a love of the game as you do in, the, yes, in that case. Uh, one more thing let me, let me toss at you here. When you're in those kinds of situations and, you know, it, it, so much of it that, that coaches do is situational football, how do you get them prepared for, say, okay, we're at, say, third and seven? and we know we're going to go for a pass at this particular time. How do you get them prepared to do that situationally? Just rep it in practice, understanding, you know, yelling, knowing what the sticks are. It's third and seven. Know, know my route depth. If it's got to be eight yards, we want to make sure we catch it at eight, turn around and stick the ball out, try to get that first down in the right situation on the goal line, not just in the middle of the field, of course, but understanding where the sticks are, our route depth every time, how the, how the defense might play us in that route, and knowing the hole in the zone possibly. 
Mike, tell us about this guy from your perspective. Uh, he does a great job. Uh, does a great job with the kids. Does a great job for us during practice, and you know, very valuable to us on Friday nights. He's up in the box, and you know, he, he identifies the coverages for us and lets us know what the defense is doing. Also, on the flip side, he he, he does a real good job helping out the defense as well. Well, you can't beat that. Well, we appreciate you being with us tonight, Dylan. And, yes, sir. And you got a still got a, a season ahead of you, really. You got a little bit more than half a season ahead, but things have started out so well at three and one, and. Uh, you got a big one this week coming up with uh, First Assembly Christian, but most of all, it looks like you're in some good momentum from what you had with this big victory this past week, so wish you a lot of success. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to be continuing here with Coach Stroop and some of our other special guests that we'll have here for this evening, and so stay with us. There's a lot more to come tonight on the USJ Sports Show. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated for 40 years in Jackson. All right. Hey, thank Huge you. Southern Good buffet you, at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. And back we are here at Brooksy's Barn live. We would love to have you come out any Wednesday night here and join us here because we're live usually between 6.30 and 6.45 with the USJ Coaches Show. You can have a great meal here as well as great fellowship, get to meet all the USJ players and coaches. So remember that next Wednesday night. Join us right here. And Dylan's going to stay with us here. And, Dylan, I want you to introduce the gentleman that you've got right here. Yes, sir. This is senior wide receiver, tight end, safety, David Sane. Number 17. Number 17 on your uniform and number one in their hearts. There you go. I'm sure they say that at your house. Davis, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a senior right now. What has it meant for you to be as a part of this program? Uh, yeah, uh, it means a lot. I moved here Christmas time last year, and uh, as soon as I showed up uh, for summer workouts, like it felt like a family. Uh, they threw me into a spot where I could make plays, gave me opportunities, and Good coaching. Where'd you move here from? I lived in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Spring Hill. Okay, yeah. Yes, G- great place to make cars. <laughs> but uh, Now, tell us tell us a little about, about your background as far as when you actually started playing football as a kid and, and just guide us through those steps. Yes, sir. Uh, football, I played football for as long as I can remember. Um, it was always my favorite sport. You know, growing up, my dad played football, so that was always what I wanted to do, just mm-hmm. be just like him. So, uh uh, football was always a big deal for me growing up and still is today. And how did you come to decide to really specialize in the position that you play every week? What what led you in that direction? Uh, I kind of just kept growing. And <laughs> He's 6'7". This is his first, this is first See, year I, receiver. I wasn't sure, but it's, when I saw him stand up before yes, he sat down here, I said, he's got to be 6'5 or taller. That's well, one of them things you can't teach, being 6'7". No, seven no, now. <laughs> no, 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 no. That. Yes, but but – Tell us how much it helps to really have against so many of your opponents. You've got a height advantage out there. Oh, yeah, it's a big deal because, I mean, I'm not quicker, faster than most of the corners I play, but if I'm even with them, they're beat, you know, and and we got a quarterback who knows to throw the high ball. It helps out a lot for sure. Well, in this game that you just had this past – and you're playing this past Friday night against a Hardin County team that was recognized in some polls in in their region uh, being number two in in – so it was really, really huge to get that victory. And I asked the coaches about this. Let me ask you as a player, 
you get that lead, and then all of a sudden you know if they're a tough team, they're going to make a comeback on you. What is, what is the challenge about being able to hold off a charge of a team that's trying to come from behind and take you on there at the end? Yes, sir. Well, I feel like uh, we, uh, we went into halftime knowing they were going to make some adjustments. We came out with some new stuff that week, uh, and it worked well. And they came out with a new defensive plan, new offensive plan. And, you know, we, didn't, we had to just keep our foot on their necks, uh, stay aggressive. We know they were going to have a little bit more motivation than us. We just had to uh, outpower them. Now, Davis, tell us about what your plans are after graduation. Uh, I want to go to college. Uh, I want to major in biology mm -hmm. and uh, be a, a nature biologist. Think possibility of college football in your, in your blood? I'm not sure. I always wanted to, but uh, – I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. It depends. Uh, you got any thoughts about where you may want to go? Uh, not necessarily. I'm applying to a lot of schools. I uh, want to stay relatively close to home. Okay. And, and tell us about your family, other than uh, your, your mom and dad, and who else is at home? Uh, I had a, it's just my mom at home right now. My sister goes to college at Tennessee Tech. Okay. So, so. you got it. So you got one sister? Yes, and sir. Okay. Very good. Yes, sir. Now, Coach, yes, give us the rundown on this guy from a coach's perspective. <laughs> oh, tall. I always preach every day, use your length, you know, high point the ball, um, just run hard. He practices hard, um, just try to, keep, you know, stay focused in a long week sometimes. You know, they got school and a million things. Just trying to keep them focused at practice. Just the small details, like I said, their route depth. Um, when we get down there in the, in the red zone, we know it's probably going to go to 17. Teach him to jump high and high point it. Biology, you say that's the kind of thing that you want to. What what is it about that that appeals to you? Uh, well, uh, I've always enjoyed nature, and that was a job that I saw where I could be out in nature and uh, taking samples and looking at data and that kind of stuff. And it's always just come. Uh, that's you know that's really neat because there's a lot of young people that that would not be on their agenda, but you know there are so many jobs to be had out in there in that particular profession. So wish you a lot of good luck with that. What does it mean to you to be a part of this program as you came in here and you're a senior and you had to adapt to being here? Tell me what it means to be a part of this USJ program. Yes, sir. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, I didn't realize it at first when I got here, but uh, USJ is a big deal around here. You know, everybody knows who we are. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's a lot of pressure for sure, but uh, we got to go out there uh, and perform and also stay humble and uh, uh, stay uh, – acting well off the field as well. Let me ask you one more thing, and we'll let you go. But I, I, I go ahead, Dylan. Yeah. I want to pitch in on okay. that, on that, on sure. that, what it meant to him. I think it, what it meant to the team, you know, right when he got here, it, it showed how hard he worked and what a good character he had. They, they immediately accepted him. You know, he got, he, so he's got his way from not being here now to a starting role on the field, um, just constantly worked, and they immediately, everybody picked up and liked him, and he was a team guy immediately when he came in just by work ethic and – being a good person on and off the field. Nothing like a work ethic that gets respect as quickly as, as that can. Uh, let me ask you just as, as a final thing here before we let you go, and that is, you know, particularly coming in here as a senior and, and being able to very quickly be a leader on this team and, and to do what you do. What has it meant to you to build the relationships with your teammates? Uh, yes, sir. It's uh, The school I came from was a, a lot larger, so uh, having a smaller school, you know, you're connected with everybody. You know, you know everybody. You see everybody in the halls every day. Uh, I didn't have that in my other school, especially being a senior. You know, I feel like walking by some of these freshmen, you know, they, they come into practice with me every day. I, I talk to them. I know who they are. They look up to me. Uh, it means a lot, for sure, to be able to come in here. And like Coach said, they accepted me immediately. Well, listen, we want to wish you a lot of good success as this season continues on. We're, we're four games into it, and it seems like it just started last week. But uh, wish you a lot of good success. Glad to have you part of the USJ program and, and hope the rest of the season goes extraordinarily well. Yes, sir. And that is Davis Sane, who is one of the Bruins, who has been doing a terrific job for them this year. And when we come back, we're going to meet some more of them. So stay with us, everybody. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated All for right, 40 years in Jackson. Huge Southern Buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, 
chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. And you see Coach Stroop back with us and Steve Beverly here with you once again here at Brooksy's Barn live from Worthy Road Studios where every week you have the USJ Coaches Show. And we're delighted to be with you tonight and, again, invite you to come out. And also, please, before we meet our guest tonight, please go by and tell all of our fine sponsors that you enjoyed seeing the show. It's their efforts that make this possible every week. So tell them that you appreciate them sponsoring the USJ Sports Show. Well, Coach Stroop. Give us the introduction. I've just met him myself. Give us the introduction of who you have here with us now. Uh, this is Raleigh Seals. He's a senior. He's a, a tight end and defensive end for us, and he's been with our program. I guess he, I brought him up in eighth grade, and uh, he's been with us uh, that long. Uh, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a versatile player, athletic, uh, and has really grown into and be a, a really good leader for us. Uh, matter of fact, he just got his second, uh, second D1 offer yesterday from Austin P. State. Well, congratulations to you. you. Hadn't made hadn't made up your mind yet, have you? Yes, obviously. Sir. Yes, no. sir. Well, listen, that that's a big deal in anybody's background. And as we have seen just in this past week in college football, if it ends up being a group of five school, let's see what the Sun Belt did last mm-hmm. week yes, as, as yes, they sir. rolled through their oh, competition. Wow. It was an amazing week for them. Well, let's talk to you a little bit about your background. First off, tell us about what appealed to you that made you want to play football. Uh, I've been playing football since I was about in third grade when I lived in Humboldt, played in Medina League, and I've been playing up against my age ever since. I've always gone against kids older than me, so I've always liked it, like the challenge of being younger, smaller, going against other people that are bigger and older. Okay, you didn't mind having to go up against the best where no, that sir. was concerned. Yes, no, sir. Uh, tell us, as you it, now, you're, since you play on both sides of the ball, which is the one that you prefer the most? I prefer offense. Okay, now why? I like having the ball. There you go. All right, that's it. You yes, don't sir. mind if you're in a situation <laughs> and, and you're late in the game and, and it's down maybe to the final five or six plays. If you're the guy who gets the ball, you want it yes, sir. in that situation. Yes, sir. What, what are the biggest challenges of being a tight end? Uh, biggest challenges are trying to go against D linemen that are most of the time bigger than you. I mean, some of them outweigh me 30, 40, 50 pounds, and – that's just the biggest challenge to me is trying to get a block them. Now, how about on the opposite end? What are, what are the biggest things about adjusting once you've come out of a series of plays, adjusting to going on defense? Uh, really conditioning most of the time and then focusing on assignments, learning how to do everything. Coach, I'm going to ask you to give us your thumbnail about this young man and what he has meant to the program. Uh, you know, Raleigh came in and, and, and has done a real good job for us. He's got, he, he moves very well for a big guy and he's got great hands. Uh, and and you know he he he's sitting here kind of not talking. He's a, he's a really good blocker too. Uh, he <laughs> he he really enjoys. Uh, uh, you know the Friday night. Matter of fact, he came over and he said, just you know, you just keep running it, and I'll keep I'll keep blocking it. And <laughs> and um, but he, he uh, defensively he does a good job for us. Uh, and he, he, he gives us a good pass rush uh, and, and, and helps, you know, stop the run. So, he is, uh, you know, the last two years he's really done a really good job for us. That was a big win last Friday night against yeah. Hardin County because they have been highly recognized, even as high as number two in their region's rankings. But tell us from your standpoint, you, you got out to that, and we saw the highlights earlier, and you got out to that huge lead in the first half. Well, I don't know whether we call it huge, but 21-7, to seven, we, yeah. we can take that. But – you knew, and it's like Coach David Blackstock used to say at Union University. He used to say, you know, the good teams are going to make a run. The great teams will make an even bigger run at you. Mm-hmm. You're up 21-7, to 7, and then all of a sudden 
you know, they're trying to make their comeback, and, and you've got to hold them off at that point. Emotionally, how is it for a team like yours when they're trying to get back into that game and, and trying to snatch it away from you? When we knew coming into halftime, went in the locker room, talked about it, we all said scoreboard 0-0. Zero, zero. We still got to go out there and play like, a, like we were down because we knew a team like that would easily come back on us if we made a couple mistakes, and we knew to go out there and play our hardest. Let's talk also about off the field. What are the things that, and I'll talk about academics in a minute, but what are the things that you enjoy doing off the field that are just for pure fun and leisure? I love going to hang out with the guys. Love going to eat all the time, always. Especially my big old linemen, always trying to go eat with them. Favorite you know, food? <laughs> uh, sushi. Okay, you want to go for sushi. All right. Yes, I, I, I can imagine that. All right. Pretty good card player, right? Pretty good card player. Okay. okay. I like all to right. say, my, say so myself. Uh, if you say, all right, well, see, now, now he's finally telling me that, that he said, you're not saying as much as you usually do, but now we bring it out of you that you, you're a good card player from that standpoint. Anything about outdoor sports that you enjoy? Um, just I love being outside, especially in the fall. I mean, mm. cool weather. Now that the sun's trying to not beam as much. You know, yeah. Going outside with the cool weather feels awesome. I'm with you on that. This is my favorite time of year when suddenly it gets down maybe into the 60s and 70s for the highs, and, and it just feels you don't have as much humidity to have to deal with. Tell us about what you hope to do after high school, after graduation. Uh, I hope to go play football at a Division One level, mm -hmm. uh, graduate after four years. And what do you hope to major in? Uh, business. Business, yes, okay. Sir. Is that in your family's background in any way, uh, or is it just something you, you appeals to you? It's just something that appeals to me. Okay, very good. How about your family? Tell us about them. Uh, I've got two sisters. One lives in uh, Dallas, Texas. One's moving to Nashville right now. And then lovely mom and dad that do everything for me. Yeah. Hey, uh, what have your parents meant to you as far oh, as they encouragement? Meant a, a ton, all the time. They do anything for me. Coach, tell me emotionally what he means to your program. Uh, you know, having Raleigh out there, uh, uh, you know, offensively is a, is, a, is a big boost for us. Uh, you know, he he is again. He's you know he, he's just like any kid. You know, he, sometimes he's got a little he got a little relax on him, and sometimes he can get he can get full throttle. But when you get him going full throttle, he's a handful. And uh, you know, he 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 shows up for big games, and and you know he again. The last two years, he's really grown as a as a leader in, on our team, uh, and so he, if he continues to do that, then you know we'll be we'll we'll be fine. Well, Raleigh, congratulations on the offers you've had so far, Thank and you. we wish you a lot of good success as this season rolls along. Got First Assembly Christian coming up on Friday night, and none of them are easy when you get down to that point, but wish you a lot of good success as the season rolls along. Thank you. It means a lot. All right, it's Raleigh Seals who joins us here on the USJ Sports Show, and coming up we got some more special guests from the Bruin program, so don't go far. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated you, for 40 years it. in Jackson. Huge Southern Buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. And our director tonight on the USJ Sports Show is Stephanie Janda. And, of course, our ever-cool, ever-present executive producer, Paul Schultze. And reminding you, we are here every Wednesday night. So join us live from Brooksy's Barn. Enjoy the fellowship as well as the great food on the buffet. And you will have a great time and get to meet a lot of these Bruin players and coaches. And tonight, 
We have another one right here. Dylan's back here with us. So, Dylan, introduce this young man to us. Yes, sir. This is a senior cornerback, Will Horton, number one. Number one, not just on your uniform, but in your heart. There <laughs> go. Will, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I moved down to Jackson, Tennessee when I was in seventh grade. Um, I've been playing football ever since I was five years old. I like to hang out with friends after and when I'm not in school. I attend Love and Truth Church. I attend Love and Truth Church right out uh, next to Brooksy's Barn. So you, uh, so five years old when you first started playing that, was that in the backyard or was that in an organized league at that, that point? That was in an organized league up, uh, up north called Pop Warner. So we were playing tackle football at the age of five, learning how to hit, learning plays and everything like that. Now, playing defense as you are. Yes, sir. Tell us, tell us what it is about that side of the ball that you enjoy most. You can just be like an animal out there, even if you mess <laughs> up. Like, mess up. <laughs> I play, you know, always hear in the stand screaming. We, we have been having a great time during the commercial break just talking about things going on in the background, including Dylan's mom just <laughs> had to <laughs> run around the place. Yeah. And we found out a few things that we won't tell you on here. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, be careful of the cell phone wherever it is. Okay, let's, let's put Hardin County behind and let's talk yeah. about Friday night. You've got First Assembly Christian. You're going to be down in Cordova about – and, and – I don't care where you are, you get to this time of the season, they're all tough. All yeah, right? yeah. Give us what you know about them and what you expect them to bring to the table. Uh, they're a very young team, uh, but they, they, they have a couple athletes on the team that can that can hurt you. Uh, you know, the biggest thing this week is staying focused. You, you know, you get a big win last week, and, and then you come to this week, and, and, and you can tend to, you know, not, not be as focused. But the kids have done well this week at practice. Uh, we've had to make some personnel changes here and there, but you know it's uh, you know that the, the kids are ready to go and 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 get after it. It's a region game for us, so it's our second region game of the year, and it's an opportunity for us to be uh, two and zero uh, in, in the region. So uh, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to to to, to be uh, you know get a win in the region, you won't take it. So that's what we focused on this week. Receiving core, and you're going to have guess an opponent like this. What are the biggest things that you try to work with them on preparing and, and wiping out of everything that happened last Friday night, getting that mentally out of their minds and looking ahead to this opponent on Friday night? Um, I think it's just understanding the coverages, knowing they, you know, they're going to play a lot of zone coverage behind it, knowing where the hole in the zone is going to be, um, just kind of understanding the guys are going to be going against, watching the film. Um, just keep, like you said, keeping them focused. You know, big win last week. You don't want it to carry over and have a little slack in the beginning of the game. You want to start fast and just rep it and practice. Out of curiosity, about and both of you can answer this one. About how much time do you spend yourselves actually looking at film of the next week's opponent? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I think the last time I looked at it, I had about 19 hours in. I think you pretty well know what they're going to do by the end of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes Unless it's something they don't have that <laughs> that's on the yeah, film. Yeah. You know. Sometimes you look at too much film and you start second guessing there all this other stuff. But you know you, you know you you, you want to watch a lot of film and I, I I try to watch as much as I can and 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 you know you want to make sure you, you you know what they're doing and when they'll do it. How about now when you get your receivers and really the other positions that are there how much when you how much do you actually take the players in and show them during a given week what what they're going to be doing um i think it's about an hour two hours every week we we, we do it we try to at least um on sunday afternoons we try to get them in there and watch a little bit um and if we see some stuff during the week we might try to pull them in 30 minutes before practice mm -hmm. one day and maybe watch the yesterday's practice and show them what we should have done different um how we can do it different um so it's just, it's just it varies week to week and by opponent well, you got a big one again. They're all big when you get down to this point with only, you know, about six left in the season and then hopefully in the playoffs. But at this stage of the game, uh, we want to wish you both and all of the team great luck and great success this coming Friday night against First Assembly Christian. And we hope that come next Wednesday night we'll be talking about another victory. Well, we hope so too, Steve. It's so great to have been with both of you tonight and all your players, and we've just learned so much about these young men, and that's one of the great joys that I have doing this. And I hope it's a great joy for you to get to meet them and get an opportunity to see what life is like for them, not just on the field, but what their interests are and what they hope to do after they leave USJ and leaving their mark as leaders at this fine school here in Jackson, Tennessee. As we say, every Wednesday night, we're here live from 
Brooksy's Barn, and it is one of the finest eating places in all of Jackson, Tennessee. It's, it's a legend. And so we hope that you'll join us out here on a Friday evening live and go to the buffet and then have an opportunity to visit with the coaches and the players for USJ. And that, it'll be an experience that I think you'll carry with you for the rest of the week. Well, we got to run, but again tonight, our director has been Stephanie Janda and our ever cool, ever present executive producer, Paul Schultze from Worthy Road Sports, and they'll be bringing you the USJ game and a whole slew of games all across West Tennessee this weekend. I'll be back on Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock with Union University Volleyball as they'll be taking on Shorter from over across the way in Rome, Georgia. So hope all of you be with us for that. And until we're with you next week here on the USJ Sports Show, Steve Beverly saying so long from the great hub city of West Tennessee.